Hello guys and welcome. I am the Armchair Pundit. I'm very excited to bring you this. This is the first ever episode of Fifth and Last. It's the NRL show that I'm going to bring you. It's going to be a weekly show. Normally we on Tuesday. This one's on a Wednesday just because I've been a bit tied up this, this week. But going forward, this is going to be released on a Tuesday. Being episode one, we're going to focus on the pre-season. We're going to have a look at each individual team, probably the best player they've, they've brought in, probably the player they're going to wish to hand lost, and also a key player that's going to have to be well for them if the team can have a good season as a whole. And then we're going to have a look at my prediction for the final table, see who gets in the coveted top eight. That is all to come though, guys. So let's have a look at some of the postseason transfers. He came in, see he left, and we're going to start off with the Broncos. So the Broncos have already got a pretty strong squad in the finals last year. Probably the two players that sort of stand up that came in for me were Corbin Sims, adds a bit more steel to the pack that's already a pretty impressive pack, and also Devin Mead out wide, the guy who brings speed and agility out wide. This is going to be a pretty difficult guy to stop should you get game time. The biggest loss, I think, to this Broncos team in 2017 is Corey Parker. Uh, retired, he's a legend of the game, legend of the club. They're going to really, really miss his influence in key times this, this season. The player for the Broncos, I feel, has got to play well for this team to really progress and push forward is Anthony Milford. He played very, he's played very well the last couple of years. Ben Hunt didn't have the best season last year. A lot of the pressure fell on Anthony Milford's shoulders. I've got a feeling the same going to happen this year. I think Darius Boyd, though, now being captain, is going to really step up to the mark too. But Anthony Milford is the main man at the Broncos. Moving into Canberra. Canberra had a very good season last year, no doubt about that. I think they're only going to get better. Uh, the the key sign for me this year is probably David Taylor. He already he's going to bring massive size towards already a huge pack at the Capital. If he gets back to a bit of a form, we know he can play out. He's going to be a very difficult player to stop. I'm not sure if he's actually signed a full playing contract yet, or he's a paper player. I'm not entirely sure where he stands yet. But if he does get his act together, he could be a very very good player for them. They haven't really kind of lost a lot of strength this year, Canberra. Uh, probably the biggest one, I think, probably is CC Wacker. But again, I don't think they're going to be too upset the players that they've lost. For me, the key player this year for them is Jared Croker, their captain. Centre, he, uh, he's a very, very good player. But will he get into the Blues team this year in New South Wales? I don't know. I think he might lose out to Jerry, Jerry Le Lewis, centre partner. Um, but he's very, very key for them. If he plays well, then generally the team play, plays well. Moving on to the Bulldogs. Bulldogs had a very, very quiet postseason in terms of transfers in. I couldn't really pick out any good transfers that they made. In terms of players leaving the Dogs, Curtis Rona is probably the one that stood out for me the most. Um, again, just quick, very good player. And the key player for the Dogs in my mind this year is Moses Mbai. Um, he's got to step up, take the reins, be a solid playmaker, not necessarily the maverick on the pitch. He's back to Josh Reynolds. He's got to be the main man there. He's got to start being the boss. Moving on to the Sharks. Obviously, defending champions from last year. Can they make it two in a row? Yeah, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, coming in, they didn't really make a lot of big-name signings. Probably Charrington, the hooker. He's come in. He's a young guy from West. Uh, he hadn't had a lot of game time. Uh, from all accounts, he was a very, very good youth player. So hopefully he can now step up to the NRL level. They've obviously lost a few players. Mick Ennis, for me, is a big one. He's very influential for them last year. Good, calming influence, been around the block. Obviously, Van Barber as well. Kind of up in the air whether or not he's actually going to come back in 2017. I don't, I don't know, but for me, Mick Ennis is that big loss for, for Cronulla this year. Their key player is going to be Jack Bird. If he can step up again this year, he was excellent last year. If he can step up again this year, the guy is very, very strong. He's very fast. He's got great hands. He's going to be their main guy this year. Uh, moving on to the Titans. Again, they made the finals last year. Very, very good good year for their standards. I think it's only going to get better. Obviously, they've now got Jared Hayne for full season. He's going to make a big difference. But I think their biggest signing in the postseason this year was Kevin Proctor. Gives them a bit more grunt, a bit more experience up front to have his big boys really drive on. But their loss, I think, is David Mead. Obviously, they got Jared Hayne coming in as well. But David Mead, he's a good player. Um, for me, the key player, even though they have got a Jared Haney, he's obviously the standout superstar of that team. For me, it's got to be Ash Taylor. If he can get that good second season under his belt, 
they're going to be in for a very good year again. They've got Kane Algie back from injury. He was out for all of last year. If so those two together fire, this Titans team is going to go far, particularly with players like Conrad Horrell in the centre too. Moving on to Manly. Now, Manly was had a disappointing year last year. They've kind of been on the on the, on the decline. They're sort of their, their better players have gotten older. But I think they've recruited fairly well. They've brought Blake Green in from Melbourne. Um, he's going to be a very, very good offset to Daily Cherry Evans. Obviously, they've kind of been missing that player, sort of player since Kim Foran left. Blake Green could well be that replacement and he could well push him on to that next level. In terms of players that they've lost, well, they've lost a few to retirement. Steve Matai is gone, Brett Stewart's gone. But for me, I think the biggest probably is Jamie Lyon. He's obviously their guy, he's their captain, their goal kicker. He's got, they've got to replace those stems. It's not an easy thing to replace. Replacing a goal kick is not necessarily the easiest thing. You can't, you can't just make leaders either. He was a natural leader. Whether they can replace that or not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but the key player, obviously, Daily Cherry Evans this year. A lot of pressure falls on his shoulders. He didn't play very well last year. I think maybe the pressure of the, of the contract saga maybe got some a little bit. I hope that's all settled down now. He's also not having to play directly alongside Dylan Walker. Uh, Dylan Walker is going to be allowed to play out in the centres where he thrives the most. So I think Daily Cherry Evans with Blake Green alongside him is going to really, really flourish. On to Melbourne. Melbourne, they've lost a lot of players this year, a lot of good players. Obviously, it's all the big three. Uh, Billy Slater's back from his sort of year and a bit out. But for me, they're kind of, they're main additions for Josh Adokar from West Winger. Uh, proved last season, very, very quick player, very good, good hands, good line speed. But they've also lost Corabetti. The guy is a freak, very, very good player. They've lost um, Blake Green. They've lost, Kevin, they lost Kevin, Kevin Proctor. So there's three very good players that they've lost. The Melbourne system obviously works around Smith, Kronk, kind of now Cameron Munster um, and Billy Slater. But you need the players around them to make that system work. You can't just fill them with crap players. Those players are around them, even though they didn't get the recognition, they're still very, very good players. I really feel someone like Kevin Proctor, they're really going to miss him. It could make a bit of a difference. Key player for me is Smith. Cameron Smith is always, I mean, the guy's been around forever. Very, very good player. Very influential. Even though they've lost some players, He's a kind of glue to that team and they keep them together. Moving on to the Knights. The Knights are my team. I'm sorry to say, it's the first place I lived in Newcastle, sort of following from day one. It's been a pretty rough couple of years, but you've got to stick with them. Players they've brought in, Roy Cross Jason. I was really excited by him. Obviously now he's injured, I think, for the first seven rounds, I think it is. These things happen, never mind. Um, but also they brought in someone like Jamie Bura. Now Jamie Bura there wasn't a popular choice for him to leave Manly. I don't think the fans are that happy he'd been there for a while. Um, but I think it'd be, it's an, that's an excellent addition for Newcastle who struggle for experience up front. They've got the talent and they've got the size, but it's the experience they were lacking and someone like Jamie Bureau is going to bring that. So I mean, I'm excited to see him play. I think the big loss this year postseason was Corbin Sims. I was really disappointed to see this guy go like, you know, the sort of player that Newcastle could have helped build their pack around him and Jimmy Bureau as well. Unfortunately, he's gone to Broncos. I kind of understand it, but I'm just disappointed he's gone. Key player for me in this Knights nice team is Dan Gagai. If they can get him the ball as much as possible, he's going to have a lot of carries this year. He's going to be their main go-to guy. Whether he's going to play a fullback or centre, I don't know. I'm not sure where he'd be more influential. Maybe fullback, but I don't know where he's going to play. Okay, moving on to the Cowboys. The Cowboys haven't really recruited very much this year. Ben Hampton's pretty much the only one that's come in. In terms of players that they've lost, James Tarmo's obviously a standout guy. They've lost Roy Cross Jason, who's a good backup during the sort of origin periods and things like that. But James Tarmo is the one. Um, big, solid guy in the middle of the pitch. They will miss him. He's kind of plateaued the last couple of years, but I think he'll find his groove at Penrith again. And obviously the key player of the Cowboys, you can't look any further than JT. He is coming to twilight of his career, but he's still the main man up in Townsville. He's an excellent player. He's the best in the world. He, even at the ripe old age, I think he's 33, he's out of 34, maybe he's still the best. Eels, now this is, this I don't think I've ever seen a professional sports team quite like it. Paramount Eels. Kirisumi Arba, he's probably the standout signing, in my view, anyway. He gets his personal life sorted out. He could be a game changer over there at Parramatta. He's a very, very good player, very strong, good hands. He's quick as well, so yeah, he could be a very good addition to this team. 
terms of losses, Michael Gordon, obviously fullback, goal kicker as well. He's gone. Experienced player, one of the consistently one of the best players that they had. So I think they're going to miss him. In saying that, the key player that I've picked up this year for the Eels is his replacement. He's been in the club for a year or two, but he's replacing the fullback Bevan French. A guy that's got pace to burn. He's so quick. He's got a good eye for the gap. They got it. He's playing fullback this year. They got to get him as much ball as they possibly can in as much space as they can. If they can do that and unleash this guy, he's going to cause havoc. Penrith, moving to Penrith, is head slightly further west. Obviously, the biggest signing this this time is James Tamu. Again, big guy. We've always spoken about him. Big loss to, to the Cowboys. For me, their biggest loss this year, Penrith, is Chris Grismore. He was released for personal circumstances, family problems, that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if he'll be back, but at the moment, I think he's not. I like this guy. I really like him. He's at the Bunnies. He's a very good player. Solid, does the basics extremely well. Hits people very, very hard and tackles and uh, carries hard. For me, the key player for his Penrith team, team is Nathan Cleary. I hope he doesn't get a second season syndrome. Looking at him last year, he, he was, you couldn't imagine he was 18 years old. He's brilliant. This guy was incredible. He's very, very good. He's going to have people like Matt Moylan supporting him. He's got Peter Wallace at Hooker who's been around for ages to help guide him too. So, I think he's got the sort of players around him as well as a self-confidence within himself to not have that second season syndrome. I certainly hope so. Okay, on to the Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs since 2014 have been very, very disappointing. I just, I can't believe how much they've dropped off the pace. Their recruiting's been, I mean, the, the fact that I've picked Robbie Farah as their sort of crew of the year, so this kind of says it all really. He's a 33-year-old hooker. You've got to be, I think they just need to be looking past that kind of signing, to be honest. They had decent hookers. McInnes and Cook, I don't know why they had to find his Farah, but anyway, they did, and he's probably the sort of biggest name that they've signed. The biggest loss for me this year is probably Luke Keary going over to the Roosters. He had a future. Again, may not have really fulfilled his promise that he kind of had. They've got Cody Walker sort of taking his place as well. So maybe it was time for him to move on, but I think he's going to be a big loss, a big, a big gain for the Roosters. The key man for me for this for this Bunnies team certainly is Adam Reynolds. A lot of rest on this guy. If he's if the, back, the Bunnies do well, he's got to do well. His kicking game is probably the best in the comp. He's got to keep that up. He's got to start 2017 with a bang. Maybe he needs to add a bit more to his running game. He's not the biggest player, but maybe he's got to start running it more. To the Dragons. Now, oh, geez, the Dragons, they should be doing a lot better than they are. I, I still don't think they've got the squad to really compete. I think their biggest signs were Cameron, Cameron McInnes from the Bunnies. He's a very good young hooker. I'm not sure he's the sort of player that they needed necessarily. I think they need a proper leader in their pack. But they've lost Mitch Rain. Mitch Rain's a bit of a mercurial player. Sometimes he brings it, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he does it brilliant, sometimes he's rubbish. So it might not be the worst swap, those two. For me, the key player, I think he's a captain as well, is Gareth Widder. He is not the most exciting player in the world, but he is solid. He's got a good eye on him, so he needs to really stand up and lead this team. But I fear for the Dragons. I don't think they necessarily got the best pack, and their back line is shaky. They've got Josh Dugan. He seems to be made out of glass. But again, if Josh Dugan fires on the outside of Widow. It could be an interesting year. Roosters, now this is a team, this is probably the most disappointing team of last year, certainly. They've um, they've signed some good players. Michael Gordon is probably the, maybe the standout sign. I think they made on Kiri, but I think Gordon made the bigger impact at the club, I think. Obviously fullback, um, but they're sort of missing a bit of experience. The Charles Mitchell is a is a brilliant player. He is a very, very good player, but I'm not quite sure if he's ready for that fullback role just yet. We'll have to wait and see. In terms of losses, I'm not really sure they'll be too disappointed how, who they've let go. Sam Moa, he's one of my favourite players. I love watching him play. No nonsense. Jackson Hastings will be a bit of a loss, I think. I had high, high hopes for him. But for me, the key player over at the Roosters has got to be Mitch Pearce. And Mitchell Pearce, he's got to stand up this year. He's got to just take the team by scruff and neck. And just make it his own. He gets a lot of flack, but for me, he's an extremely talented footballer. Probably one, one of the most natural talented players in, in the game, but he hasn't quite clicked. I'm not exactly sure the reason behind that, but he's got to do something about it. And this year may well be his year. The Warriors, wow, what a spine these guys have got now. They've basically got the, the New Zealand spine. Isaac Luke, Sean Johnson, Kieran Foran, and Roger Tuivasa Shek. Should Kieran Foran actually be allowed to play still with some stuff coming out with him again but that's all in the future 
obviously four and twelve with their key signing. They haven't really lost anyone that's of any really sort of significance, which I think they'll be happy about. The problem with having such a sharp, good back line is I fear for their forwards. I don't think they've got enough up front to be able to make the damage, to be able to produce the damage and produce the goods with the back line that they've got. So they've got a very good team, but is it? I'm not sure it's balanced enough. Their key player, Sean Johnson, he's got this team out of a sticky patch more than he cares to remember. The only thing about Sean Johnson, I think, and I hope it comes this year, is his consistency, just consistently being that good all the time, not just bringing it out every game or for five minutes here and there, but consistently just bringing it. I think having someone like Kieran Fora next to him will help him do that, and it will also help him create that magic even more than he already does. Last but not least, West Tigers, <clears throat> well, they brought in Jamal Idris, whether or not he's actually going to be playing, I hope he will. And whether or not he's actually in the right frame of mind and physically where he's at, I don't know. He's been in the game for a while. At his best, he's devastating. Um, at his worst, he's poor. Uh, but look, I think I think it'll be a good signing for them. I think he'll get into the West team and he'll make a real impact. Loss. Ado Carr, probably. I mean, he was showing signs of being a really, really good winger, but... Good wingers are done a dozen at the moment in the NRL. Can they find someone to replace his pure and out and out speed? I certainly hope so. And their key player for me, James Tedesco. They've obviously got a very young uh, halfback punch yet, Mitchell Moses and Brooks. Both of them he's working on their defence. Brooks is just slidden downhill. Mitchell Moses' stocks come up. He has put his stamp on his team a lot more than Luke Brooks has. And James Tedesco, he's going to have another big year this year. He's got to be in that blue side as well. But, yeah, for me, James Tedesco. Okay, guys, so moving on to my table predictions. This is how I think it's going to finish. It start from 16, go up to 1. Unfortunately, being a Knights fan, this is going to be another long year for them. They haven't really recruited the kind of quality I was hoping they were going to recruit. It's really difficult up in Newcastle to get that kind of thing. Third-party sponsorships, that kind of stuff just isn't really there. They've got the wooden spoon, I think, three years in a row for them. I hate to say it, but I think it's true. In a 15, I've got the Dragons. I don't think they've got enough about them. I really don't. 14, I've got. I've gone for Parramatta in at 14. They've got some very good players. Corey Norman, um, French, players like that. But I don't think they've got enough quality to really compete. I don't think they're really going to push that top eight. 13, I've got West Tigers. I may be wrong in this one, but I'm really struggling because the top eight is so competitive. Wests are just, where they've got enough influence of hooker, I don't think they have. And I think Brooks particularly might struggle with that. Mitchell Moses seems to be growing into his role, but Luke Brooks could well struggle with a lack of leadership at hooker. A lot is going to depend on, Ted on Tedesco. At 12, I've got the Rabbitohs. They just keep declining. They just haven't recruited well. They've lost players. They've got to get players like Greg Inglis into top form. Sam Burgess has got to play better this year than last year. A lot of pressure on those guys to play. And there's only a few of them that are really up there in that kind of class bracket. So, yeah, I think it might be a quite a long year for the Bunnings this year. Again, 11, I've gone for the Bulldogs. Again, they haven't really recruited. And I fear... I fear for them. Yes, they've got that sort of big pack, but it doesn't necessarily work nowadays because the reducing the interchanges that kind of cost them a little bit. Des Lancelot, he's always got a way of getting his teams across the line, so no doubt will be proven wrong with this one. They'll probably end up making the top eight. Ten, I've got Manly. Again, from 11 to 1, it's just so close and compact for me in terms of players that Manly may well end up making the end. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, especially if Cherry Evans fires, Blake Green fly, uh, fires. Dylan Walker, if he gets off the floor, Tom Javojevic. Up front, they haven't got the best pack. They've got some good individual players. Jake Javojevic, very, very good player, um, but they haven't got the best collective pack, I don't think. In at nine, the Warriors, I think that's just, I, I'm not sure if four on, four on his own is going to bring this level of consistency that the Warriors need to make the finals. I might be proving completely wrong. He might come in there and be a revelation, but Foreign has got to be in the right frame of mind to go in there and do it and just get away from everything that's causing all, the, all these problems. Have they got enough quality in the pack to be able to push for that top eight? I'm not entirely sure. Coming in at eight for me are the Roosters. Now, the Roosters, I think, could well be in with a chance of being their grand final day because they seem to have a very, their team has come 
very well rounded, very well balanced. They've got a big, strong ball carrying pack, and they've got some dangerous outside backs. But I know we'll certainly be in the top eight. Seven, I've got the Titans. They're only getting better. They're getting better and better and better each year. And I certainly think they'll be in the top seven. They've recruited well. Um, they haven't really lost too many. So, yeah, I think they'll be there. Six, I've got the Broncos. Broncos, for me, last year they just weren't quite where they should have been. They played some very good results, but really disappointing considering they were probably favourites going into that season. I think they're going to not struggle, but I don't think they're going to really live up to it this year. Five, got the Cowboys. Again, they're kind of coming down, but they'll be there with their abouts, no doubt. No doubt. They're a class outfit. Whether they're sort of ageing, the top stars ageing just a little bit too much, which makes it sort of every other week travel that bit harder. I don't know. They've got some very good young players as well. Though. Caelan Ponga, he's probably going to be wanting to prove a point this year if he gets some game time. Okay, into my top four. At fourth, I've got Penrith. If their halfback partnership, if they can fire, this Penrith team are going to be extremely good. Bryce Cartwright, I think, when they're going back into the pack, he's not the, necessarily the big hammering ball carrier, but he's got some good tricks up his sleeve. So Penrith Panthers, they're the team. Watch out. Three, I've got the Sharks. Again, four, three, two, and one. I they just I don't know where they're going to come in. This is my top four teams. Sharks again, the fame champions. Haven't really. They've hooker again is probably the position where they're going to struggle. They haven't really got an experience to play a hooker. But then again, they got Maloney and Chad Townsend two in their own right. It's extremely good players. I think um, Valentine Holmes is going to play fullback this year. So again, very very good player. Good spine path maybe hooker. Two, I'm going to go for the Melbourne Storm. Can't write these guys off. Every year I go into the season thinking, oh, Melbourne Storm, uh, the point I'm going to make it. Every year I get proven wrong. You know what, this year I'm not going to do that. Melbourne Storm are going to be the one or two for me. A class outfit again. It just doesn't ever seem to change. And whoever they bring in just seems to sort of adopt into their rhythm of playing and slots them seamlessly. So that leaves who I think will be minor premiers, Canberra. Canberra Raiders. Again, great year last year. Haven't really lost anyone. Recruited okay. Just brilliant. I think the camera is not a very nice place to go to in the middle of July. Cold, wet, snowy, horrible. Uh, yeah, and they've got a very, very big team. Very, very good back line. Good half-back partnership. Blake Austin, Aiden Caesar, good players. I think Canberra could well do it this year. Guys, comments. How's I rate your team? Let me know what you think. Who you think is going to be my Premier? Who you think is going to be Wooden Spoon? Do you agree with my transfers that I've said are key? Who do you think your team's key player is, guys? If you give them a like, thumbs up, dislike, thumbs down, any comments that you've got. But anyway, guys, I'll see you next time for episode two. Cheers.